What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing all of the items that I picked up from my personal collection on our trip to Kingston. Me and my girlfriend went a couple weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. We stayed three nights. We checked out a lot of great places. Now, for my personal collection, I did not pick up a lot, but I picked up things that I just have not been able to find in the area. So I decided to buy it and add it to my collection and I'm really excited to share this with you so let's just get straight into it. So our first day when we were there it was a Sunday and flea markets were open. This one here was only opened on Sunday during our three day stay. So we decided the first day to check it out and see what there is and honestly it was the nicest flea market I ever was through. It had a lot of great stuff, it was very clean and it's called Collins Bay Flea Market. If you're ever in Kingston, you wanna check out flea markets, I think it's open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's closed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So if you're gonna plan a trip, I recommend doing it on one of the days that they're open so you can check out this flea market. Now, there was a few things that I really regret not buying, and I'll talk about them in a minute, but the only thing that I ended up finding was a book for The Rock. You guys know I love collecting WWE, I love collecting the hardcover books. I have two Mankind books in my collection that I still have yet to read. I've just been so busy with everything else. I seen this, it was only $3. I decided not to even talk them down. $3 is a great find for this and a great price. It is in perfect condition, it looks like it's never been read. There's no dings, no scratches, nothing, and it still has the sleeve on it. So $3 for this. I think it's gonna be an interesting read. I can't wait to check it out. But again, I still have the other Mankind books to read. So this was only $3. I decided to pick it up. I said, what the heck, when I found it. I like collecting that stuff. It was only $3. That was the first find that I did get. Now, there was other things at this flea market. It was so big inside. I really regret not buying. There was a little tin tank. It looked amazing. The one thing that was wrong with it is when you pull it back, not only is it supposed to shoot forward, but the little cannon is supposed to move in and out. Unfortunately, that feature was broken. It did no longer move. It was only $6. I really regret not buying it because I like stuff like that. I like that it was an old tin toy. I couldn't date it. I'm not sure how old it was, but I really hemmed and hawed. And I decided to put it back, and now I kind of regret it. But again, it was not functioning. And I know if it was functioning, it probably would have been a lot more, but it would have been something cool just to add to my collection. And the other thing that I missed out on in a way, was another Pac-Man plug and play. I'm not sure anything about this. I'm not sure if it had other games or just Pac-Man. I recently did purchase another one that I had yet to share with you guys, but I decided to pass. It was $15. I could have maybe talked her down to $10. That's the same person that I bought the book from. I decided just to pass on it. I already have one, a Miss Pac-Man one that has a bunch of other games on it. I just knew nothing about this one. I thought it would have been cool to add to the collection, I decided just to pass on that. So that was everything that I did and seen at Collins Bay Flea Market. It was amazing. I could have went another whole round through it and found a whole bunch of other stuff. They have a lot of great old items and I definitely am going back the next time I am in Kingston. Now, of course, I had to check out a comic book store while I was there. There's this place called We Have Issues. Now, Google Maps did direct us to the right area, but we had to find it. They had no signs outside. As soon as you walk up to what was the actual door, then there is print on the door saying We Have Issues. There's no signage anywhere, nothing outside the building, nothing to direct us there, but we ended up finding it anyway. So it's called We Have Issues. Now, when I was inside, they have a ton of stuff. If you like collecting anything, Marvel, any figures, wrestling figures, hockey cards, literally anything, they had it all. They had so much stuff that I just can't name everything because it was jam-packed full of a ton of goodies. So, I did go through. At first, as soon as you walk into the rights, there is a lot of hockey cards. Now, unfortunately, he didn't have any prices on it, so I just started to pick out things that I like to collect and players that I collected, and then we worked out a price at the end. So I did pick up a few hockey cards. In my opinion, I got a great deal. I'll let you guys decide. I know not everybody that's in this video is into hockey cards, so I'll try to make this section fairly quick. So I picked up a Hendrick Ludquest jersey card, which I thought was really cool. I'll save this one to the end. It's one that I really, really wanted. Uh, there is a numbered out of 299, a Tuka Rask jersey card, which looks amazing. 
There is a quad jersey for Roberto Lulongo. Another retired goalie that I do collect. I just, it's hard to find stuff like this in Ottawa. So while I was there and I seen it, I decided to add it to the pile. There is a rookie retrospect of uh, Carter Hart, which is a goalie that I don't find much of his stuff in the area. If I do, it's worth a lot of money. I just can't afford that. So I picked up that one while I was there. There is a Chara Premier. Now I like collecting the Premier cards. This is a player that I think is going to retire in a few years. This one here is numbered out of 125. I thought that was just a great find for my collection. Then we have the ones that I seen as soon as I started going through the pile. There is a Martin Brodeur jersey card, a treasured swatch for artifacts. I didn't look up the value of it because, well, I got a great deal on it and I have no interest in selling it, but I thought that's a great card to add to my collection. And then we have a Joe Sackick 1200 game milestone, or sorry, a 1200 point milestone card. This one here is a one card per case for this. Uh, it was Parkhurst 2002. So there's only one card in an entire case of boxes, which is amazing. So it was rare. He tried to tell me that this one here, he'd want about $10 for it. Uh, and then he looked it up on eBay. He's like, oh, it's actually going for $30, but he's, I'm, he's like, I'm not gonna go back on it. So he looked at the other cards quickly and he said, if I said 30 for all of them, would you do that? I took it immediately. I figured it out as soon as I got back to the truck. That was only $4.25 per card. That's amazing. They're players I collect, they're cards that I collect. I love jersey cards and everything was amazing. So in my opinion, I got a great deal. The Joe Sackick, having it one card per case is amazing. A case hit, that is awesome. It's a great card to add to my collection. I love Joe Sackick, a Martin Brodeur and a Hendrik Ludquist, which I don't even know if I mentioned, Hendrik Ludquist is numbered out of 50. So just great cards to add to my collection. I've been slowing down drastically on collecting cards, but whenever I find stuff that I collect, the jersey cards, the numbered cards, players that I like, players that are reti retired, um, I do like to pick stuff like that up. Next is something that I just seen I had to get. It's at a, ga uh, at a place called Mind Games in the Cataraqui Mall. And it is a Funko Pop for Thanos, but it is the blue Funko. Now they did have other ones that I was checking out that I was kind of trying to decide on. I ultimately just went with this one here. This one here was, I think, $14.99. Average price for a Funko Pop at a retailer. It is a Walmart exclusive, so normally these go for a little bit more, uh, but it's in perfect condition. The only thing is, if you're gonna be going there for Funko Pops or anything that they sell, they put a sticker right here, and that is a pain to get off. So if you go to remove the sticker and there's residue left over, make sure you have goo gone, just dab it, and try to just get the plastic. Don't get any of the paper, of course, but just get the plastic and it will come right off. That's one thing that I had to do with this one because the sticker just stuck to it, the stickers that they put on their prices. So um, I thought this was a great deal. The other ones I was looking at is an Incredible Hulk there was a blue one, I think, a green one, and a purple one. I was trying to decide, but those ones were $30. I decided to go with Thanos because I love Thanos. I already have two Incredible Hulk. I have a gold and a red one. I don't have any special Thanos. So this is a great one to add to my collection. We did get other ones there. My girlfriend got a Lilo, and she also purchased one for her grandfather, a Elvis. But it was a lot of fun just to go through. And they had a lot more Funkos that's just in my area. The stores that sell Funkos and have a ton of them, they don't have these ones. They usually don't have the special variants. So I thought that was very cool and I decided to pick that up because I haven't seen it before in my area and it was only $14. And the last item we picked up the last day I seen it, actually my girlfriend spotted it, I missed it. I'm glad she did because it's something that's really cool and I don't have anything like it in my collection. And that is this ammo case that was only $15. This here, I looked it up, a rough guess is it's late 40s, early 50s, so it's just after World War II. Uh, it is Canadian, which I am Canadian, so I absolutely love that. And it shows the uh, size of the bullets on the top here and printed in. I think it says here, uh, nine millimeter. 
Um, it's really hard to read, but I've seen these going. I looked it up online. I don't have any interest of selling it, but I wanted to know roughly how much it's worth. They sell $30 and up if they don't have any of the yellow writing on it. If it has yellow writing, it's usually higher than that, but this is something that's staying in my collection. It was only $15. It all looks authentic. It all looks real. So again, I'm dating it 1940, uh, late 40s, early 50s, something like that. But I think it was just cool. So what I'm likely going to use it for is for my uh, art supplies. I wanted to get back into drawing. I haven't drawn in... Uh, I haven't drawn anything since high school, honestly, so it's seven or eight years ago now. I want to get back into it. I just dug out my scrapbook. I just dug out all my art supplies, finding what's missing, what I need to get to start drawing again. And I think I'm just going to put it in here if it will fit, because that's something cool. This is definitely something that I wasn't expecting to find. This was at another flea market. I think if you just search it while you're in Kingston, it's called Flea Market. It's right next to Action Packed Comics, which... I unfortunately didn't pick anything up there. They had cool stuff, they had cool comics, but some of it was overpriced. But this was just a lot of fun to find and purchase. $15, I was trying to try to talk them down to 10, but the guy that owned it wasn't there. The guy that's actually purchased it and sells it, he wasn't there, so I decided to just say $15, yeah, I'll take it. Now they do have other stuff and he did recommend coming back because they get a lot more stuff like this. They just sold a decommissioned grenade from I think the 50s. So stuff like that is really cool. That'd be interesting to add to my collection. So I definitely will be back to this flea market in the future whenever you do return to Kingston. Right now we enjoy Kingston so much. We plan on going back next year and it's just a lot of fun. There's so much to do, so much to see. I did go to a lot of other places as well to check out, other comic book stores and other places just to see what they have, video game stores, stuff like that. I really wanted to go to SM Games. We did go because online they showed that there was Yoshi plush. I just like Yoshi. I'm just getting back into Nintendo since my girlfriend got me the Switch. I don't have any plush in my collection, let alone a Yoshi plush. So. I like Yoshi so much. We went in to try to find that. They didn't have any in stock. So we will be going back to see if I can get my Yoshi plush. But there's other places we went that I just didn't pick anything up. So there's not much I could say about those places. But there's a lot of great places to go and see while you're in Kingston. I highly recommend planning a trip and going out and checking it out. Even if you're staying a couple days, just go to a hotel. We were at the Holiday Inn near the 401. It was a blast best hotel we're definitely going to be staying there when we go back and we absolutely loved our time while we're in kingston so i did find a lot of great things to add to my collection and stuff that's going to be staying in my collection i have no interest in selling any of this stuff the hockey cards the book or the ammo case it's just stuff that i just don't see in my area i decided just to go ahead and buy it so i'm glad i did because I'm going to have great use out of all of it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see a video where I talk about different places to see, places to go, and places to eat in Kingston, I will make a video. If you guys are interested, let me know down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Please take care. Peace.